It's a little bit different, eh? <laughs> um, yes, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Collat Miles, as everyone keeps saying. Um, and I'm going to share a story tonight about how we wrote a book in a day. Got a bunch of people together and we wrote a book in a day. And it was for a good cause. Um, but before I do that, I would very much like to um, share my why, you know? So Candice mentioned before, start with why, so why not? Um, can I ask you to, this is going to be a bit awkward, we might have to stand for this, no actually let's try sitting down, can I ask you to look around the room and just find someone in the room that you can just look at, but make sure you're not looking at the person looking at you. <laughs> Alright, do that right now, I'm talking, <laughs> it's happening. So you're looking at somebody else who's looking at somebody else, right? Yeah? Alright, so, so I want you to picture... So I think about the future a lot, okay? I think about the future a lot. And I wonder uh, what today is going to be like in 20 years' time for the person that you're looking at. What's the world going to be like for that person? Just keep looking at them for a minute, all right? So, so here's what I see around them. So news headlines that might be in place, things that might be going on in the world around us. By the way, Siri says that it's a Sunday. Eh? 22nd of November. 2037, that's the year. So what is life like at that stage? So here's the world I see. This is the one that's not real yet that I'm working on, and I really hope that I find yet more col uh, collaborators and conspirators um, to work on this with me. And I'm looking around the room, and there are so many here. You can look at me again if you like. <laughs> Thank you. And you're under. <laughs> um, so, so there's three things I like to see in that world. Uh, one is um, society is more sophisticated, you know, that we've grown more tolerant of ourselves. There's an internal dialogue that's kind of misfiring, um, quite relevant these days, uh, with personal resilience and that sort of thing. There's a dialogue with us as a society, as a community. So where does, you know, strength and community come from? So that sort of thing. And our relationships with the planet and, you know, other, other parts. Um, so there's something around that. Um, uh, something about climate change, I think, that we're on the front foot of climate change in that future. So think about that person you were just looking at. What's the world like for them on that day, on that Sunday? Um, that we're on the front foot. We're seeing news headlines about, yeah, actually, good news. We cracked this thing. Oh, we've made headway with that. We're starting to get on the front foot instead of the back foot. Um, and then I think um, businesses, I've got, you know, those who know me, I'm a sucker for a good cause. Um, I've got a real passion for building beautiful businesses. And uh, the sad truth the reality is where we are now is that's more of an exception than the rule. Um, but I want to, in that future, where you imagine that person there, what's the world like around them? I want you to think about, actually, what if businesses, beautiful businesses were more normal rather than the exception? And that actually ugly businesses, well, that's kind of a thing of the past or it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's weird. Hey? So anyway, like, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, uh, hands up who wants to be in that kind of world. Yeah? Oh, thank goodness I'm in the right room. <laughs> Anyway, um, so back to my story. It all started with this guy. Can you guys see? We might have to turn the lights down low a little bit. I really would love you to see who, who, the people. Um, yeah. Boom. All right. So this guy here um, passed away about a year ago, and his name is Des Rippey, and he's the Komatua in the prison, New Zealand Prison Services. And so my story starts with um, a couple of people that saw a problem and decided to do something about it. Does that sound familiar? It's almost like the start of everything cool that ever happened, right? Um, so Des Rippey, um, Kamatu in the prison serve, New Zealand maximum, jail, maximum security jails, uh, and the lady to the left of him there, or my left, is um, Graziella Thake. And she's just this remarkable lady. She's a forensic psychologist, worked the prison system. Anyway, they saw a problem in and around the communities connected to the prisoners. So it's not the prisoners themselves. It's the communities that are connected to them. And they noticed that there were vulnerable and at-risk mums all over the place. And they decided, you know what, let's just do something about that. We could try a few things out. And they started experimenting. Um, at that time, I was um, a mentor. Uh, sorry, uh, Graziella had become my mentor. And I was spending time with her uh, just with sort of coaching and that sort of thing. And I was really uh, forging a, a beautiful relationship there. So I came to really respect and love that relationship, and we're still really good friends now. Uh, but Graziella pulled me in and said, hey man, we're doing this thing, 
and it's pretty awesome, and we want more people involved. Um, so we started doing stuff, like running little resilience building workshops, hey? holding space for somebody that just has no space in their life. All right? And lots of nods around the room, because we've all, I think, we've been there at some point, you know? Those with kids, you would know this. But we've got a part of our community that often gets overlooked and blind, you know? And, um, and we didn't want to forget, we wanted to put, put a space in, in, in to help them connect and help them be. And we wanted to create a, you know, kind of a, so anyway. Um, uh, looks chaotic because it really is. Um, but really, it's centered around young, uh, vulnerable and at-risk mums. We partnered up with community-based centers and they would give us referrals and we'd take these uh, amazing people in and just help them get unstuck in their lives. So that's the kind of thing. We did that for about three or four years and we came to a point where it was like, whoa, this is really cool. We're seeing like amazing impact. Um, and we're getting these ladies who are just kind of changing their circumstances. They're just shifting their own circumstances. Uh, but how do we scale this? This is the question. How the hell do we scale this? Um, so we decided to form a charity. And so we formed a charity called the Renew Mothers Trust. And Graziella is the founder of the charity. And we thought, well, how are we going to launch this as a bang, you know, with a bang? And this is how we came up with the idea of, why don't we just write a book in a day? We'll just get everybody that's been involved so far, collaborators, co you know, all the, all the supporters, corporate supporters, uh, supporters, mentors, facilitators, everybody. We'll just cram them in a room, we'll spend a day, and we'll see if we can blast out a book. Boom! And um, we decided to partner up with the best-selling author, Kathy Holmes. Uh, I don't know if anybody here knows her. Uh, she does a lot of self-help books. I'm seeing a few nods around the room. That's awesome. Um, and she's just this remarkable lady who's had a, you know, an amazing life story. A and she came in and was our sort of chief ed editor. And so we created a, a book, basically, with those two as the primary authors. But the nice thing was we wrote a book in a day with, a, with over 100 authors. Everybody got their name in that book. You know, which is something that is now published um, out on Amazon. So it is exactly as it seems. It, is, it was chaos. It was intense. There were high points, low points. There were uh, colorful points. There were boring bits. Um, Lisa King, eat my lunch. They were all over it. Man, you know, and that was still early days for them. So there was a big gig. Um, we just loved it. So the whole spirit of the day, we all wore these T-shirts. So every time you see a picture, I scroll through my thousands of photographs. I'm like, oh, there's a pink shirt. I know what I'm looking at. Eh? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, oh, I've run out of time, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that story because I, I think it's, it's, it's kind of remarkable. Um, what did I take from this? Um, actually, that's the result. Uh, so if you want to download it on, on uh, Kindle, um, it's, it was published two weeks after that day with everybody's name in it, fully you know, edited, desktop published, the whole bloody lot. And um, we also learned how to work the Amazon <laughs> system. <laughs> and we got uh, international bestseller status, that's the Amazon badge that they apply when you reach certain sales mil milestones, um, within about four days or so. Um, and it was just rocking, it was what a roller coaster ride. Um, so uh, a couple of reflections, final, final thoughts. Um, one is never underestimate what can happen if you get the right people in the right circumstances together. Hey? Second thing is, um, focus on the why and you'll always find the right thing to do. Hey? Does that sit? Lots of smiles and nods. Um, the last thing is, find a problem worth solving and like that lady kept saying over and over again, just do it, start! <laughs> just start solving it. Because the right people in the right circumstances tend to show up, <laughs> right? Hey? Journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Um, thank you for letting me share that little story. Thank you.